Hello, my name's George English. I'm the director of Research Through People. Now, we've made lots of these videos. It's always interesting to see which are the most popular. Well, the ones that get the most views are the ones about surnames. And very often that's sort of the start point for people getting interested in family history. So we've made these sort of things to see, once you get interested in surnames, how do you go from there to actually researching your family history and finding out more about what actually happened? So, where did your surname come from? Well, those of you who watched our surname videos will have seen this, that most surnames were adopted in the 11th to the 13th century. When William the Conqueror came over, there were no surnames. Gradually, the nobles adopted them, and so by about the um, year 1300, most people had a surname. Can you get back that far? <laughs> Not very often, it depends on various factors. But the main types of surnames are four main groups. Local surnames, Latin is toponymic, um, that have to do with a place. Because what happened, people got surnames based on what was different about them. So very often people moved just a few miles from where they lived beforehand and they got the name of the place they came from. Examples here, London and Glasgow, obviously big cities, but very, very small places. Could be they lived near the hill or wood on the outskirts of their village. And that was what distinguished them. Or they came from a different country. Someone from Scotland perhaps went to live in England. The second big group is surnames of relationship. And typically the son of a father would get a name connected. So if the surname was, if the first name, sorry, was John, in England they would be called John's son. It seems slightly different in the different countries. In Scotland, Mac means son. So instead of Donald's son in England, it became MacDonald. In Wales, they tended to use the possessive, so instead of William's son, it would be Williams or, or Jones. Similar in Ireland, and Ireland also had O'Brien, which was the grandson of. Third big group was occupations or office. Every place had a smith, a tailor, and so on and so forth, and that's what distinguished that person. So you get lots of these surnames that are based on occupation. And then the fourth big group are nicknames, some feature perhaps of the person, perhaps had a dark complexion, they were brown, they were short in stature, strong. In Scotland, Campbell means twisted mouth. So there are these four big groups that most likely where your surname came from. Now, of course, having discovered where your surname came from, and very often on our websites, people say, can you tell me where my surname comes from? So we get back to them. But can we get back six, 700 years? It's unlikely, but it can happen. It can happen in particular cases. But very important, you don't assume because you've got the same surname as someone that's a blood relationship, because you can see with these surnames, different people could adopt them. So what are the factors in tracing ancestry that particularly have to do with tracing back for surnames? And really the key, if you're going to go a long way back in time, there needs to be some reason. Up from 1800 on, the success is a, chance of success are good because in fact the available records are good. Official registration of births, marriages and deaths started. Before then, not only was official registration not around, but there were far fewer sources. So status was the big factor that might determine if you can get back three, four, five hundred or more years. Obviously royalty was tracked and recorded, nobility. Land ownership, quite often you find going back there are records of people owning land. Now there are particular groups where in fact the work has been done way back. So take a clan, they've recorded the people in the clan, the blood relations, and come back down. So all you have to do then is get back <laughs> to the last known ancestor. And in fact, simply find out the Mayflower, so recently the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower, a lot of work done on the passengers on the Mayflower. So if you're lucky, you can trace back and perhaps just have to get back 200, 250 years to where they've traced them. Now records, of course, are key. Before official registration, it was the church parish registers, started in the 1500s, so from then on you got a fair chance of there being a record of, of a baptism or a death. Wills, going to be available back in time. Gravestones, it's interesting how often we find a 300 year old record of someone on their gravestone. There have always been deeds and legal papers. These may have your record of your ancestor, you may get lucky.
Obviously, the surname you have depends. If you've got an unusual surname, much more likely that one can trace and say, ah, yes, it is that person. Whereas, say with a John Smith, you may have found the right record, but knowing it's the correct one is far more difficult. And did they live in the same place? Much more likely you can trace back if that's the case. And basically, before the Industrial Revolution, people did tend to stay in the same place. So therefore, you get a lot of clue from the fact that this family, this surname seems to be a recurring time and again in that particular area. <clears throat> now, it's only when you think back with surnames, if you go back 10 generations, you may have as many as 500 different ancestors' surnames through your mother's line and your grandmothers and grandfathers and so on and so forth. So quite a good chance that you will have a surname that may be in common. <clears throat> Are you related? It, that depends. <laughs> so let's just do one or two types of examples. So the classic thing you get sometimes is that family law says we're descended from. <clears throat> we're descended from royalty or something. And sometimes that is correct. So here we've got an example, for instance, a Musgrave family that are traced back to the 18th century, and there's the name Musgrave. Now, what's interesting here, in fact, we were able to trace the Musgrave family, a noble family, back to Westmoreland in the 14th century. Rate of royalty? Well, that depends, because what tended to happen, obviously the eldest son in particular, would become king. But there'd be other uh, children sons, and particularly daughters, who would then marry and have a different surname. What we found here with the Musgraves, that in fact they married into the Wharton family, there we are back in the 16th century in, in Westmoreland, and then, then de Clifford in Yorkshire, going back in time, Percy in Annick in Northumberland, so different surnames, um, not obviously royal, but in fact if you know your royalty you'll start to recognise these surnames, and in fact Percy was descended from King Edward I, who married, <clears throat> a Percy married King Edward, and going back to William the Conqueror. And essentially, if you get back into royalty, there's a very good chance you will get back to William the Conqueror. So here's an example where, in fact, we were able to trace that. And in a sense, if you get back into the line, it becomes easier because someone's done the hard work of tracing these things very early on. <clears throat> now, another example is Scottish clans, and here's a clan map. If you've got a Scottish surname like MacLeod or Mackenzie or, or one of these here, Campbell, it's known where these clans tended to live. So you may not be a blood relation. Very important, a lot of clan members weren't blood relations. They were fealtic people, people there for loyalty and so on. So you can trace back to the clan. doesn't mean to say you're a blood relation, but nevertheless, you get a lot of connection through that. But what more often happens is you come to us and we trace back in time and we don't know what's going to happen, but they're almost always surprises. So here's a quick example. John Shirt, he's born in Birmingham, in the Midlands. He actually goes and lives in Wales, but his parents, so his dad's born quite near Birmingham as well. His mother's from Northumberland, sorry, from North, uh, Northamptonshire. And going back in time, her family, very much from the Midlands, Nottinghamshire, Northampton, it's already got a number of counties there. Going back on the shirt side, in fact, they were from the east end of London, Stepney. Uh, and he's, gosh, there's James, he went out to Australia. Gosh, there's a story there. In fact, we finally got back to Southwark on the south side of the River Thames. So they're tracing, lands. that's what happens. You come to us, we look back in time, and it's amazing the different sort of stories that build up. Um, and, and that's what family history is about. That's what it's about knowing your surname but then going back in time. We can't or didn't get back in that case to the original shirt. Pretty unlikely that'll happen but there we are we're back almost 300 years. So if you're interested please get in touch and this is what we find the surname has sparked the interest. I want to know more but I'm not quite sure what and I'm worried about cost and so on. Of course you are. So what we do is we say send us your information and we'll for free we'll look into this and we'll see what the chances are of getting back in time and we'll come up with a series of options. Uh, we tend to have a gold, silver and bronze package and some people say you know, do the whole gold package with a number of lines but you might want to be a bit cautious and just start with the bronze package. That's fine. What we're trying to do is help you make an informed decision like you would with any purchase so you can decide what's best for you. Sometimes people start small with a bronze package perhaps and then they like what they find and then go on from there. Entirely up to you. This is one of the videos, you probably know that we've got a number of videos on YouTube that you can find. 
please get in touch. We're here to help you if you want. There's a phone number there. There's an email address. We look forward to helping you and bringing your ancestors, your family to life. Thanks very much.